Have you ever wondered just how high is too high when it comes to blood pressure? Did you know that even if you feel perfectly fine, you could still be at risk of dangerous complications like heart disease or stroke? In this video, we'll break down what numbers you should be looking out for and why managing your blood pressure is more important than ever. Let's dive into the facts that could potentially save your life. When your blood pressure is too high, it forces your heart to work harder than it should. Over time, this extra strain can weaken your heart muscle, damage your blood vessels, and lead to a range of serious health conditions. High blood pressure, or hypertension, is especially dangerous because it doesn't usually cause obvious symptoms until the damage has already been done. That's why it's known as the silent killer. By the time symptoms like headaches or dizziness appear, it's often a sign that serious harm has already occurred to your heart, brain, kidneys, or eyes. How high is too high? Let's talk about what constitutes high blood pressure. In 2010, the American Heart Association, AHA, changed the guidelines for what is considered high blood pressure. This change caught the attention of doctors and patients alike because it lowered the threshold for hypertension, making millions more people fall into the category of having high blood pressure. Before these new guidelines, a blood pressure reading of 140 over 90 was considered hypertensive. But under the updated recommendations, anyone with a reading of 130 over 80 or higher is now considered to have hypertension. Let's break down the five categories of blood pressure according to these updated guidelines. Normal, a blood pressure reading of less than 120 over 80 millimeter of mercury is considered normal. Elevated, if your systolic number, top number, is between 120 and 129 and your diastolic number, bottom number, is less than 80, you have elevated blood pressure. While this isn't yet considered hypertension, it's a warning sign that you could develop high blood pressure in the future if you don't make some lifestyle changes. Hypertension stage one. If your systolic number is between 130 and 139 or your diastolic number is between 80 and 89, you are in stage one hypertension. At this point, doctors will often recommend lifestyle changes, such as a healthier diet and more exercise. Medications may also be suggested depending on your overall risk of heart disease or stroke. Hypertension stage two. At this stage, your systolic number is 140 or higher, or your diastolic number is 90 or higher. This is a more serious form of hypertension that usually requires medication to control. Without treatment, stage two hypertension can significantly increase your risk of heart disease, stroke, and other complications. Hypertensive crisis. A reading of 180 over 120 or higher is considered a hypertensive crisis, which requires immediate medical attention. Symptoms such as chest pain, shortness of breath, or signs of a stroke, like facial drooping or numbness, may occur at this stage. So what causes high blood pressure? There are many risk factors, some of which you can control, and others you cannot. Here are some of the most common factors that contribute to hypertension. One, age. As we age, our blood vessels naturally lose some of their elasticity, which can increase blood pressure. Two, family history. If your parents or other close relatives have high blood pressure, you are more likely to develop it yourself. Three, being overweight or obese. Carrying extra weight forces your heart to work harder to pump blood, which can raise your blood pressure. Four, Lack of physical activity. A sedentary lifestyle contributes to weight gain and makes your heart work harder to circulate blood. Five, poor diet. A diet high in sodium, saturated fat, and processed foods can raise blood pressure. Six, excessive alcohol consumption. Drinking too much alcohol can raise blood pressure and damage your heart over time. Seven, smoking. The chemicals in cigarettes can damage your blood vessels, causing them to narrow and increase blood pressure. 8. Stress. Chronic stress can contribute to high blood pressure. When you're stressed, your body releases hormones that temporarily raise your blood pressure. Over time, this can lead to long-term hypertension. 9. Sleep apnea. This is a condition where you briefly stop breathing while you sleep. It's been linked to high blood pressure because it stresses the heart and disrupts normal sleep patterns. 10. Pregnancy. Pregnant women can develop high blood pressure known as gestational hypertension or preeclampsia, which can be dangerous for both the mother and baby. Now that we've discussed what blood pressure is and the risks associated with it, let's explore what you can do to prevent and manage high blood pressure. One, maintain a healthy diet. A balanced diet is one of the most important factors in controlling blood pressure. The DASH diet, 
dietary approaches to stop hypertension is specifically designed to help lower blood pressure. This diet emphasizes eating plenty of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins, reducing sodium intake, limiting sugary foods, red meats, and processed foods. A low sodium diet can significantly lower blood pressure. The American Heart Association recommends limiting sodium to 2,300 milligrams per day and aiming for an ideal limit of 1,500 milligrams for most adults. Two, regular physical activity. Exercise is another powerful way to lower blood pressure. When you exercise, your heart gets stronger, which allows it to pump blood with less effort. This reduces the pressure on your arteries. Aerobic exercises like walking, running, swimming, and cycling are particularly effective at lowering blood pressure. Aim for at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise each week. Three, maintain a healthy weight. Losing even a small amount of weight can significantly lower your blood pressure. If you're overweight, losing five to 10% of your body weight can make a big difference. Four, limit alcohol and quit smoking. Excessive alcohol consumption can raise your blood pressure and smoking damages your blood vessels, increasing the risk of high blood pressure. Limiting your alcohol intake to one drink per day for women and two drinks per day for men can help, and quitting smoking can improve your cardiovascular health overall. Five, manage stress. Chronic stress can contribute to high blood pressure, so finding ways to manage stress is essential. Techniques like meditation, deep breathing, yoga, and mindfulness can help reduce stress levels. Six, monitor your blood pressure regularly. If you have high blood pressure or are at risk of developing it, monitoring your blood pressure at home is a good way to keep track of your progress. In addition to lifestyle changes, many people with high blood pressure require medication to control it. There are several different types of blood pressure medications, each working in different ways. Here are the most common classes of medications. One, diuretics water pills. Diuretics help your kidneys remove excess salt and water from your body, which helps lower blood pressure. Common diuretics include hydrochlorothiazide and chlorthalidone. 2. ACE inhibitors, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. ACE inhibitors relax blood vessels by blocking the production of a hormone called angiotensin, which causes blood vessels to narrow. Common ACE inhibitors include lisinopril and enolapril. 3. ARBs, angiotensin II receptor blockers. ARBs work similarly to ACE inhibitors by blocking the effects of angiotensin. Common ARBs include losartan and valsartan. Four, calcium channel blockers. These medications relax the muscles in your blood vessels, which helps them to widen. Common calcium channel blockers include amlodipine and diltiazem. Five, beta blockers. Beta blockers reduce your heart rate and the amount of blood your heart pumps, which helps lower blood pressure. Common beta blockers include metaprolol and atenolol. Six, alpha blockers. Alpha blockers help relax the muscles in your blood vessels, making it easier for blood to flow through. Common alpha blockers include doxazosin and prazosin. It's important to remember that blood pressure can affect different populations in different ways. Let's briefly explore how hypertension impacts certain groups. One, older adults. As people age, their arteries naturally stiffen, which can lead to an increase in blood pressure. Older adults are also more likely to have other health conditions, such as diabetes or kidney disease, which can further complicate hypertension. For older adults, managing blood pressure is crucial to reducing the risk of heart disease, stroke, and dementia. Two, African-Americans. African Americans tend to develop high blood pressure at younger ages than other groups and are more likely to experience complications like heart disease and stroke. Genetic factors, combined with lifestyle and environmental influences, contribute to this increased risk. It's important for African Americans to be especially vigilant about managing their blood pressure. Three, pregnant women. High blood pressure during pregnancy can lead to serious complications, including preeclampsia, a condition that can be life-threatening for both the mother and baby. Monitoring blood pressure is a key part of prenatal care, and doctors may prescribe medications that are safe to use during pregnancy if hypertension develops. Remember, knowing your blood pressure numbers is the first step in taking control of your heart health. Whether you're making dietary changes, starting an exercise routine, or working with your doctor on a medication plan, every small step counts toward protecting your health. If you found this video helpful, 
be sure to like, share and subscribe for more health tips and information. Stay healthy and keep an eye on those numbers.